you're given an expression for the nth partial sum of some progression, and they want you to find the general term, okay? Now, it's really important to know, I got this question before, um, sometimes, in fact, the vast majority of progressions are neither arithmetic nor geometric, okay? And my classic example of one that you guys are very familiar with is the Fibonacci sequence. There is no common difference between the terms. In fact, that's kind of the thing. The, common, the difference changes every time. That's what makes the Fibonacci sequence what it is. There's also nothing you can multiply by every time to get from one term to the next. Uh, you immediately run into a problem when you just have a look at the first two terms. You're like one and one, so the ratio there is one, and then the ratio subsequently just changes every time. It's certainly not one. So not an AP, not a GP, but they can still be very well defined. And this is an example of that. So what we're going to have to try and take advantage of is what I mentioned with the recursive definition of a sequence, okay, in terms of the partial sum. This is what we wrote down before. That if you want to work out what the nth partial sum is, a way you can think about it is as the previous partial sum plus the next term, plus the missing term. It's a little bit like saying, this is very, very similar, what's five factorial? And the answer is, well, it's four factorial, and then you multiply it by the next number along, okay? It's the same recursive idea. In fact, that's why you can see these factorials in both sides. So if I were to use that here, what I'm trying to get is actually this thing. That's what I'm after. So I'm just gonna rearrange slightly, and I showed you that this morning, by subtracting s of n minus one from both sides. That's all I'm going to use, okay? If I work out what this looks like for this particular sequence and simplify out, I will get the general term. So, help me out. S of n, we're given S of n, so that's not too hard. I'm just going to write it down as is. But what is S of n minus 1? What is the previous partial sum? What should I write down? Everywhere I saw n previously, I'm going to put in n minus 1. It's, it's actually function notation, it just isn't dressed up like that, okay? So instead of writing um, a seventh to the power of n, I'm going to write a seventh to the power of n minus 1. That's all I have to do. And then there's the takeaway 1 hanging out on the end, okay? Now this does look like a bit of a mess, but you can start to see some stuff's going to, um, some stuff's going to cancel, right? Uh, oops, that's... A mistake. That's better. Some stuff is going to cancel because you see common things in both brackets, right? What can you see that will cancel? Yeah, the negative one is going to go because that's going to become a plus one with the double negative. So that's really nice. You're going to get this left over. Now, in a real way, that is the nth term. Like, there you go. There's an expression. Okay. So in some ways you're finished, but we can simplify this, right? Think back to your two unit, your knowledge of index laws and that kind of thing. What could I do with this that might help? Any suggestion? Okay. So look, I've got these are just uh, bases, common bases with powers, right? I'm not multiplying them, so I'm not going to add indices or anything like that. But I can do something to make this a little more helpful. What I'm going to write out is, if you think about it. What's the difference between these? What's the difference between these? This is seven lots of this. Wait, did I get that right? Or is it one over seven lots? It's one over seven lots. One over seven, right? Because think about this, right? From index laws, I can go from this to this. I'm used to going in the other direction. When you multiply numbers, you add their indices. But if I can do that, I can just as easily break this apart into two pieces. Do you agree? Now, if that is true, then now I have a common factor, right? So that's one option I could have taken. I don't like this option so much because what you get is not something in terms of n. You get everything in terms of n minus 1. So instead of writing this way, even though it's just as equally true, I'm going to muck around with this guy instead. Okay? I'm going to leave the first fraction like so, and I'm going to adjust this and say, well, that's seven lots of one on seven to the n to the n. Do you see what I've done? It's a bit weird because this is, this is actually a seventh to the power of negative one. Say that again. A, a seventh 
So the power of negative one, that's why the indices add up. But it, I, why would I write that with a fraction and a negative index? I might as well write a whole number. So I've got one of them over here and I'm taking away seven of them. This is just algebra, right? Can you collect like terms for me? How many will I have overall? It'll be negative six of this object, which is um, a seventh n. Does that make sense? So you need to use some of your index law stuff, which um, is going to come up a lot, because every time you do these general terms, these powers are going to come up quite frequently, especially with GPs.